We did it. We did it. Good morning, everybody. I hope you are doing super well. Quick check that we're online before we begin. A couple of moments breathing. Well, we're looking good. I've got at least one eye. Got at least one eye. Okay. So, always very good to begin. Good morning to Adam and good morning to Stefan, my papa bear as well. Good morning. So, before we begin, I thought we're always going to begin with a couple of breaths. You might think you breathe every day. However, it's nice. Stefan, anyone else who is watching at the minute that I'm not aware of, take a moment. Remember, the only conscious breaths that you take today, the conscious breath is one done with intent. Get yourself nice and comfortable. Take a breath in anyway. <sighs> Just let it all out. Relax your shoulders. Take a day big. Deep breath in. And let it out with a bit of a sigh. Oh. Feel your shoulders drop as you do it. Take another big deep breath in. And hold it at the top if you can. And take one more big deep breath at your own pace. There we go. And just see if you can arrive right here. Doesn't matter what's going on today. No matter what's going on today, just find that stillness. You don't have to do a lot of breath work to just bring some peace and calm into the body. So wherever you are and whoever's watching, I hope you can find some stillness from that. Good morning to Lisa Collier. Good morning to Christine Wright and Freddie Greenmantle. Uh, Freddie, I owe you an apology. Like. You've been on my list to contact for a couple of days now, and you messaged me. It's just getting pretty cram crazy sometimes. Um, so I'll do my best. I really will. Uh, but I do want to support you and help you. Good morning to Kirsty Almeida, to John Ramage. John Ramage, wow. I've seen you in ages pop up on my feed. Oh, we're on week two of UK lockdown. I feel like lockdown needs some sort of gangster sign. UK lockdown, whichever way around that works out. Well, that one, no, reverse, that one. Doesn't really matter, does it? So good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I have, um, I promised I would always do what's on first, which is the most important thing. And then I'm gonna go into massive lessons that I learned. Um, so I'm gonna share with you this morning. Let's have a seat. Oh, no, that's the wrong button. This is the right button. Here we go. So the whole purpose of why I ever wanted to go live every day was to share people all of the awesome stuff that is happening every day. So I made a very simple system to allow people to be able to see all of the awesome stuff that's going on today and allow you to contribute to it with grace and ease. So there is a link to a form which I will paste, uh, actually, I'm gonna paste it as we're going, just so that people, if they see this and they're like, oh crap, yeah, I've been wanting to, um, I've been wanting to get that form in all the way, then you're able to do that. I shouldn't change my view, no, it doesn't. So I can go to comments and I can go, link to contribute is here. Contribute is here. Perfect. Um, and so 
It is growing. It's growing pretty fast, actually. We had six on here last week. We've got 15 now, which means today there's 15 things you could do, which means if you're sat at home twiddling your thumbs, then do not be worried. Just come onto this form. There is a view if you're a contributor. There is a view if you are a receiver. And we could all do practicing a little bit of receiving here. So we are, there's a couple of things that have already gone and passed. I've got one without a time here. If anybody knows Paolo Fushi, which could be Paolo that I know, um, please ask him to tell me what time his online guitar lessons are. Because people don't know when to go. So we've already missed this morning, we've missed yoga and breath work. They were at 7 and 7.45. Um, straight after this at 10.30, we have a tapping with Angelita. If you've never done tapping, I'm assuming that's yeah, EFT tapping. It is wonderful. Probably one of the best modalities I ever learned to help help sort you out if you're a little bit or, or angry or upset or any emotional state that's kind of got a grip of you. Honestly, tapping, any form of tapping if you've never done it and it just sounds really weird it, it is um, however honestly there's nothing like personal experience tapping is awesome so that's at 10 30 right after um right after i've gone live um i do want to bring attention to the fact that i always miss the 7 a.m's and um if you look if you when you come on here you're like oh i'm free at 7 a.m just check in on every day every single day there's stuff at seven and um definitely swear for uh, Tim's classic. Tim's a, an awesome guy, and I've done some of my breath work before. And I think he's a really, really nice teacher. Is Tim? Um, I've also done vinyasa floor yoga before as well, although I do not know Jojo. Uh, but just know that there's other things on at seven a.m. as well. So let's have a quick run through. So ten thirty, we have got Talita. Eleven o'clock, we have got Pilates. I feel like I'm in a Pilates position right now. Although I probably should have my core engaged as well. Is that a Pilates position? So we've got Pilates at 11 o'clock. If you don't like yoga because you have to move too much or you're worried about the, your wrist strength and things like that, from what I know, I've only done a little bit of Pilates. It's very gentle on the body, but very, very, very good. Um, also very good for new mothers as well. Um, so if you need to do, if you fancy doing Pilates, that is with Julie Cohen at 11 o'clock. Uh, there's a Facebook link on there as well. Most of these are free or donation-based or very low cost. Uh, we've got the Gaga dancers. Uh, which I enjoyed reading yesterday. I'm just going to read that for you again today. Gaga classes offer a framework of users to connect to their bodies and imaginations. Experience physical sensations, improve your flexibility and stamina, and exercise their agility and explosive power. It sounds really, really cool. It does um, uh, Gaga movement. So 12 o'clock today, Gaga movement. 12.30, we have uh, the guided meditation with Lavinia Sanders. Um, so that is on her Facebook page as well. If you want to check that out, um, there's quite a few beautiful guided meditations today. And if you're new to meditation, guided meditations can really help because I think sometimes you're sat there and you're kind of breathing or you're probably thinking about chicken dinner or something and you're just trying to work out, am I doing it right? And I think having a guided meditation just allows the mind to have to have something to navigate with until such time that you're becoming uh, a more right relation for, with your mind and then it becomes much easier so um let me just change my banner there we go. okay we have got one o'clock we have got more pilates uh with julie cohen again julie you're doing it twice today it looks like you are 11 and one o'clock uh, we have a meditation, and I think that's daily. I don't know, but um, Deborah Doglin, the Cosmic Granny, the one and only, at one eleven every day, is doing the is doing a daily meditation, and I'm fairly confident Tasha's should be in here as well. And uh, Tasha's doing something at um, Tasha, Tasha's doing something at 11, 11 every day. Anti dot class, which is about the pineal. I need to check in with her and make sure she is doing that. 1.30, we've got mother and baby. The mother and baby yoga. So this looks like special practices to help the healing process after birth, foster a connection with our new babies and learn to relax in each other's presence. This is really, oh, I've got tingles when I read that. It's really lovely right now because with everything going on, um, 
farming who are pregnant right now, who are going through labor, going to hospital soon, just had a baby. It's a really, it must be a really additional extra pressure that people, well, nobody necessarily wants. So my, my heart and my love goes out to all of those new mothers right now and mothers to be right now and fathers to be. So I think classes like this, if you're at home and you just want an extra little way to connect with your child, with yourself, with your body, um, please do join that. That's at one thirty today. Bit of a gap and get some lunch. Uh, five o'clock, we have got more Pilates with Eraldo Lesco. Um, that is on their Facebook page as well. Um, seven o'clock, we've got five rhythms dance. Now, five rhythms is a wonderful dance movement um, process that takes you through five different um, energies of dancing, I suppose. Um, and people meet up and they do this in person. It's called Five Rhythms. It's absolutely wonderful. In fact, let's read the description. It's a series of dance offerings at home, seven for 7.15 until nine. So it's two hours. Um, there's a bit of a welcome, then an hour and a quarter to dance, 15 minutes, and uh, oh, then 15 minutes to dance altogether. Sliding scale, three to eight pounds, depending on your circumstance. Really, really nice. And if you've never experienced five rhythms and you didn't want to go to it first hand in person, you get to do it at home now, don't you? Okay, 7 p.m. This is the stories, not just for kids. A nightly 20 minute session of some of the most curious, beautiful, and wonderful stories from around the world told by Kenyan Scottish performance storyteller, storyteller Mara Menzies. That sounds really, really cool. So if you're looking for a way to get your kid off to bed or you just want something for yourself, 7 p.m., you can do that. And then 10 p.m., we have got Yoga Nidra with uh, Uma Dinsmore. Is that right, Dinsmore? Uma Dinsmore Tule. Um, so if you want some nighttime yoga to settle yourself in, then you have that as well. So there we have it, guys and girls. 15 different things you can do today. 15. So if you're sat at home twiddling your little thumbs, then check in on that as well. Tons of stuff to do. Um, tons of stuff to do. Stafford says he can hear but not see. People can let me know. Can you see? You should be able to see me and you should be able to see my screen. I would appreciate to find that out. Uh, we have also got, who have we got on the line? We've got James Potts watching. We've got Lisa Bracewell. We have Nicola Chester. <coughs> I love some of these extra names that I've not seen in a while. Nicola and Lisa and James, all wonderful people. James, if you are offering services, because I know you probably are, please put yourself on this list. You'll find the um, you'll find the link for the form. It's in. I've already posted it in the comments. Should have done. Although I don't see it. Oh, it says I've posted it. Oh, I think my comments are going somewhere else. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I can't seem to comment and post to my own platform. But I will do it later. So I will make sure that it's on there for people anyway. Um, so what did I learn? Anyone that watched yesterday's live show will know that it was a little bit of a mess. Um, Lisa, yeah, if you're offering services, please post them on there. I will... Um, I post it straight after this in the links. You can find the link to it on the last um, show as well, the one I'm talking about right now, which was a bit of a mess. And I think I learned something, and it's something that I've been teaching. We teach it on our Human 5.0 program. And it's about non-attachment. And I think because I started these out in the garden and I was so enjoying being out there, and it was getting colder and colder and colder anyway, um, and I've got no internet signal out there, and I'm doing it off my mobile signal, and I realised that, I was so actually attached to doing it out there that yesterday when I did it, and it all just went a little bit peat tongue. And then I kind of came in here and rushed it, and then I couldn't tune my guitar, and then I'd left my notes. So in the end, I just settled on a few breaths and just left it at that. Um, and I nearly deleted it a few times. And I realized that shit happens. It does. And then with it sometimes. But what it brought up for me was this reminder about attachment. And I think we teach non-attachment in our program. I do my best to live a, a life with non-attachment. I, I do believe that 
I follow that Buddhist philosophy that you that you that they say you're born into a life of suffering or a, a more akin translation is unsatisfaction or non-satisfaction, meaning that the more you associate or attach to anyone or anything, the greater the chance you have of experiencing a pain if that if someone or something took that someone or something away from you. Um, and yesterday was just a reminder about non-attachment not being attached to even doing it outside, not even being attached to have to doing it every single day. And it's that fine line between um, between commitment to something and having that commitment run you. And it's about having a healthy attachment or a healthy association with anything. Um, so today, I really just allow myself to just relax. I don't have to do the same thing every single day. I started these lives for two reasons. One, I wanted to sing and share some love every single day. And the second thing is I knew so many people were offering services every day. And unless you're connected in to these little groups and these little circles and you're in the healing group and or whatever it is, you've got no idea. And there's people that are on my feed that um, wouldn't necessarily be in those groups. And so I thought, well, as part of my gift, I'm going to find some way to connect them all in. And that's that little system that I've made. So if you're listening or you know someone who's who's struggling and has had to go from offline to online and all of a sudden has got like no people coming to their class or or they're struggling or maybe they're practicing and they're, they're using this this whole situation right now as going to want to get out there more and they want to have some people into their class or maybe they just decided that I'm going to give and contribute and they want to be able to do that. Please pass on that form. So nothing to do with me. I just made a system. I give it out there to the world. Fill it in. The more we can fill it, the more that people can use it and look at what's on. You have a single space. And if you know other people that are collating this information together, give it to them. Tell them to scrape all the data off it, put their data on. The new world that we are moving into is a world where we, where it's not about me. It's about the whole. There is no success for the self without success of all. And that means we have to drop our egos and our attachments to my platform your platform i want the clients like and really start to see how when everything comes together when we are contributing and working together without our own biases without our own walls of boundaries um that will move faster move further much 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 better and much more harmony and unity and um and i think this situation we're in with everything going on is teaching us that there's a lot of noise out there, a lot of noise. And finding a signal is important. And the best signal we can find is the signal between ourselves. It's always been there. But we just lost it a little bit. Or I believe we lost it a little bit. But that is in order that we can find it again. So I share what's on every single day. And I share my, my lesson of non-attachment um, because it was really important yesterday. Um, we have got uh, Rihanna Meehan on board with us, the Queen of Nottingham. I know that she doesn't mind calling her that. She's a lovely woman. We've got Stephen Burton. Stephen, if you are still on, um, I think I've messaged you to tell you this. Um, Stephen was my old Sifu from when I learned Kung Fu for four or five years in my uh, younger teens, I think it was, like 11 to 14, 15, something like that. Um, but I didn't realise this. But he was teaching me breath work through Qigong. He was teaching me about my, um, my Negung, I want to say, which is down here, my Dartium. <laughs> He's teaching me then and teaching me about cultivating Qi in my fingers. And I was like 11, 12, 13. And I remember loving it. I remember being sat up. I remember being sat up against the door in my house at Mayfield Gardens. And he's like, sit up. And he said, make sure the base of your spine and the top of your shoulders is there. And he was teaching me to breathe. And it was only when I found meditation and Buddhism at, uh, I don't know, 21. Um, it was only then, and then I was practicing more breathing and stuff, that I actually realized how much those lessons made an impact in my life. Um, Michael Porviak's watching as well now. He's our uh, awesome Chinese doctor. And he'll understand this. like. Michael, I was telling about um, Stephen Burton, who may still be watching, I don't know, but my Kung Fu teacher that taught me everything about meridians and all sorts. And the reason I'm saying this, Stephen, is because since I met Michael and everything's coming back circle again, and it's like, 
It's how the universe always brings to you exactly what you need. And those teachings when I was between 11 and 14 years old really, really helped me. And not a day goes by where I'm not thankful for what you taught me. Really, really am. Even though I didn't really understand it and appreciate it back then, I do, do love it. Uh, Christine says, this is in relation to um, the non-attachment. Christine says, exactly the same thing happened to me. My life was pants all the structure just disappeared and I nearly deleted, but thought, no, it's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Who is perfect? So I left it up. Oh, my live went was pants. Oh, okay. Your Facebook live with some description. Brilliant. You've got to leave it up. We're human beings, human beings, not human doings. I think this is my issue sometimes with Instagram because it started out as a photo platform. It's just, it's so perfect or it seems to be. And I think on Facebook now there's a, um, there's a lot more space for errors. I mean, raise your hand if you've had a life with errors. My word, I am but my errors in a way. Like every single lesson I've ever learned is just my errors. Lisa says it is useful. I will be honest, I've been overwhelmed by everyone offering stuff. I'm like attached to wanting to do it all, but this is so helpful. Thank you. I understand that. I understand that. And that's mixed with wanting to do wonderful work. It's mixed with a bit of FOMO. Uh, and at the same time, there's so much stuff being offered. It is overwhelming. But what's really interesting, this is no different to life. Like there's not any more stuff being offered now than there ever was. We just, we can see it now because it's all in one space. Um, and there is overwhelm everywhere for people right now. It, it, whether overwhelm, I can't go online. Whether overwhelm, there's too much online. And the reason I've got back to got back to Freddie, who I mentioned at the beginning, my WhatsApp is bonkers. Like, I can't, I, I, I can't. I leave my phone on airplane mode unless I need my phone because it's just there's just groups going crazy, private messages are going crazy. People are asking stuff all the time. In fact, one of the things I just want to come on to is the internet. A lot of people are worried about the internet stopping like tomorrow in some countries, according to whatever you want to believe. I haven't looked at any recent news, so I've got no, I've no idea where we're up to with stuff. Um, but even if, it's like, even if that does happen, it's okay. We survived without the internet. Services will still carry on. They'll, they'll limit or they'll um, bandwidth restrict certain services. Maybe, maybe they won't, maybe they will. But, we don't need the internet. If, if everyone can't use the internet for whatever reason, well, then we're all in the same boat. The only thing you need right now is food. Food, food and um, shelter and warmth is the most important thing that we need. It's the single biggest service alone. It's not there. So as long as we're looking after people and we've got food, having a bit of time for ourselves probably isn't a bad thing. And if we are fully restricted, I'm sure that the government in some way will sort out, sort out what that means financially for people. If we're all in the same boat, we're all in the same boat. So I just think that um, not even having attachment to it happening or it not happening or anything like that, the more that we are not having overwhelmed by it, um, it's, it's, about, it's about seeing everything around us and using it for the right reasons. Technology is not our savior, it is a tool. Just like a knife, a phone, a guitar, they're just tools. Is a car and a knife good or bad? Well, depends what you're doing with it. Depends why you have it. Um, so I think with everything going on, the biggest thing we can do, um, and with all of the um, all of the services that people are offering, like Lisa talked about, um, pick and choosing the ones that you need that serve you today, that serve you today, and coming from it from the right place. I know that the services that Christina offers for her yoga class you just wants to be able to just give and to share and to reach people in different places um and and that's it if you're doing it because you really need to earn the money from it just know that that energy will be in there as well and i get that people need to earn money right now i really do i'm not in, in any way knocking that but just try and soften the attachment to needing to do it for the money do it to serve and to give and you might find that it, it moves a lot more and a lot quicker and a lot simpler Oh. oh, I forgot I can do this as well. Look at that. It's much easier than me reading stuff, isn't it? 
Christine, I said I'd help you. Streamyard one. DM me, PM me, get in touch, and I will get that sorted for you. Freddie says she doesn't trust the government to support us. We have to support us. It's about small communities. It is. It's always been about communities. Um, however, in the short term, we do rely a lot on the government right now. Um, I can totally understand not trusting the government. I can. Um, and we do need to build stronger communities, but that requires us to drop our boundaries and to realise that we're all in this together. I am also a big believer that we are a global civilization, or we're trying to be. We're a bit like cells of a human body, except cells of a human body um, don't fight each other. Cells of your right arm is not a competition with your left arm. Your lung cells are not in competition with your liver cells. The all of the cells come together in an elegant format that works in 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 co-creation and symbiosis. And I think human beings are a bit like it's a bit like cells around the world bumping into each other. And we need to come together in some organized, elegant way, in a highly efficient way, to become one human being, one human species around the world. And sometimes it takes great adversity in order for us to do that. And I always like what um, John F. Kennedy said, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, um, I like to think that if aliens came down from outer space to attack us, how quickly we would put our differences aside. And then he pauses and says, but I ask, is it not that, is it not that aliens, um, basically, well, it means a lot of things, but it just means that there's forces pulling us apart right now. So we have a beautiful opportunity to come together and create this, um, the communities that Freddie talked about. They can be offline, they can be online. Um, but one thing that will always remain is your neighbours. So look after your neighbours. So I'm going to leave you with a song. Um, this song is called Old Pendle. Uh, as I said, it is an old Lancashire folk song about a big hill. And Cosmic Granny De um, Deborah Dowling told me that your cosmic father and your cosmic mother, your cosmic father is the nearest landmass, a large hill, mountain to where you were born of significance. And your cosmic or earth mother is the nearest river to where you were born. Um, and so this is a song about the about my cosmic dad, my earth dad, Pendle Hill. And it was written, it wasn't written by my dad, but that is my dad's writing from writing it on a very old piece of paper from when he was about 20 years old. So about 40 years old is this piece of paper. And he taught me this. He used to sing this to me when I was a kid. So I don't know if my dad's still on. If my dad is still on. And this is for you, Dad. Old, <clears throat> old Pendle, old Pendle, stand us alone. He's on. Oh, 
in glory and loveliness and That is a song about my earth dad for my real dad. Thank you. And he's watching. I really enjoyed that stuff. Morning to Janny, Danny, Jack as well. Wherever you are, dude. Not seen your face in a long time. Not seen you on my feet in a long time either. Hope you're good, man. Hope you're really, really good. Morning to June Hampton. And my dad says he's not heard that song for a long time. It's a good song, isn't it? Let me know how old were you when you wrote when you wrote this down. Because I know what book it was out of. I can remember it coming out of a particular book uh, that you used to keep all your songs in. You know, Rebecca, like, Rihanna likes it. God, Rihanna, I always want to call you Rebecca. <sighs> okay, coming to an end. <clears throat> a bit longer today. Christine says, <laughs> hello, Papa Halenko. And if you want to as well, there's also, so um, I don't see a comment on here, but I, Mama Halenko is on here as well. Do I see a comment? No, I don't. Mama Halenko, if you're on here, say, oh, there you go. There's Mama Halenko, Elaine Hartley. Oh, Good morning, Mum. I know you not love that song. I know you love that song as well. Okay, right, come on. We're going to finish it off. Um, so we started with a breath. We'll end with a breath, much like life. Much like life. So it's important to do a couple of... Um, it's important to do a couple of conscious breaths. So wherever you are, honestly, come on. You might not do Pilates today. You might not do breath work today. You might not do yoga or anything like that or meditation, but you can spend 30 seconds and do three breaths. That's all I ask, 30 seconds. If you're driving, that's okay. You can still breathe. I don't know how you um, In fact, I don't really know what you can't do to stop for 30 seconds. So find yourself somewhere comfortable. Oh, relax your shoulders. <clears throat> hmm. you take a normal breath, but just try and empty your lungs when you're finished. Hmm. Get ready to take a breath in. Deep breath in. Hold it for a few seconds. Come on, let it out with a sigh. Oh. Big deep breath in again. Hold. No, oh, let it out. I'll fully empty your lungs. Oh, and try and leave your lungs empty for a minute. No air. Hold it. Take a big deep breath in. Oh. 
gold. And let it out slowly. I hope you can feel the stillness that is created in your body when you do that. Mm. Mm. And my cousins as well. Everyone say good morning, Adam. Adam's going to help me do some uh, Thankful Thursdays live. And Adam, the first person we're going to be interviewing, not interviewing, but asking for their thanks is going to be Rihanna, because I know that she's game for a live. And probably Christine Wright, because she wants some more live practice too. And because they know each other, like two cackling country switches, <laughs> I can picture them now. They're both going to come on, and Adam's going to do some interviewing. Um, Oh, okay, um, Freddie commented earlier, just call her the Queen of Nottingham, she loves it. I will do, I will do. Freddie says, I will send my songs to you. Freddie, I have an offer for you. You'll notice at the bottom of this live stream, I don't know how fast it moves, but there. See this here? See if my finger catches up with it. Does it work? It does work. Um, if you go to that address, and I'll post it in the comments in future, but my screen will split, and you can appear here, and you can sing the songs. Um, so if you want to sing, if anybody wants to sing, um, if anybody wants to do, I've only been replaying my guitar for less than a year, so I don't have like tons of songs. So I either need people to send me some songs to learn or you can come on and when it comes to song time, you can sing. It doesn't need to be It's about just co-creating a nice space. So, um, um, so if you want to sing, then Freddie, come and join me. We'll do a little practice run. That's uh, Rihanna saying yes to coming on the live. I know that. Um, so if you want to sing, then let me know. Come on, don't send them to me. You come on and sing them and, uh, and let's do something together. So I'm going to leave it at that, people. Have a really nice day. My laptop's going to die in a moment anyway. Go in peace. Remember, practice is not attachment. The less we're attached to, the easier it's going to be for everybody. And um, have a really nice day wherever you are. And uh, just know that there's people that love you, people that support you. And if you need things to do, check out that form. I'll send the links right now. And um, I'll speak to you tomorrow, maybe, probably, but maybe.